all I remember is talking about my youth, and all of a sudden I didn't remember anything. We were hit head on by a drunk driver. The only thing I remember at that point was Reverend Goldburn, a young minister about 30 years old, helping me out of the car and helping his wife and the student out of the car. The next morning, I woke up in the hospital, and one of the professors and students was there, and they told me that Reverend Goldburn had died. His wife was paralyzed. The other student made it, made it and I had a broken shoulder, a broken knee, and lacerations in my face. And I was, I was shocked because this man had actually saved me. Went back to the seminary. Now, the seminary was 97% black Caribbean. And here's a guy that was raised in the deep south. In the deep south, you know, I grew up in a Christian family, but because of the culture I swimmed in, I was probably a racially biased. And these, these black Caribbean students and professors took care of me. It, it, it brought me out of my paradigm. In fact, we were, my roommate there sponge bathed me every day until I came back to health. Radically welcomed by the other. I experienced that. That actually saved my life. And I had a real big paradigm shift. I was the other to them. They were the other to me. And they welcomed me in with open arms. The traveler was radically welcomed by the other. It was about hospitality. And I think the greatest thing we can uh, show to others is hospitality, or the greatest way we can share the, the gospel with others is through hospitality. How do we do that? I think, first of all, we need to remember when we were radically welcome. Think about your own life. I told you my story. Every one of you must have a story. When you were radically welcomed by the other. It might have been when you were hurting and you came to a church. It might have been a, a family member that was there waiting for you when you kept rebelling and rebelling, but, but actually you finally came back because they were not judging you. They were there for you. It might have been the prayers of, of the church over you and your family when you were going through a tough time. I remember when you radically opened your arms to me in 1993 when I was hospitalized for deep clinical depression. And I came back here and I was so ashamed. I felt so weak. And you know what you did for me? You stood up before I prayed. You welcomed me and you applauded that I was home. And over the last almost 30 years, you've continued to welcome me despite all my goof-ups and mistakes, and welcomed me as your own. It's through you, this church, that I have been healed through the years. Think about your own story. How have you been radically welcomed by the other? On Wednesday morning, uh, every other Wednesday morning, a, a group of the Chinese pastors and a couple other people, we sit right here and we, we do pray songs and then we pray for this church. We pray for the North Hills. We pray for the city. We pray for the nation. We pray for the world. For an hour, we pray that God might bring revival to us. My prayer is, Lord, revive me or revive the church beginning with me because you've got a lot of work to do on me first. And I remember Pastor Yen, who did the baptisms uh, last week at 9 o'clock, you know, she's kind of shy. Um, <laughs> and she was sitting here like this, and she, she prayed, Lord, turn me from me, 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 to you, 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 you. And we started saying, me, 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 to you, 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 you. We kept doing that. Me, me. It was like a cheer. We were going, me, 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 to you, 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 you. What she was saying is turn us from ourselves to God and others. Turn us from ourselves to God to others. We can't do that unless we feel love. We can't forgive unless we've been forgiven. How do we do that? We take steps of faith towards 
hospitality. I think the first thing we do is we have to be hospitable to ourselves. Look at the scripture if you put that up there. Acts 1, 8, Michael. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It starts with us. This Jerusalem right here. Are are you and I hospitable to ourselves? See, in the Roman Catholic faith, the Protestant faith, the faith that most of us have come to, we've concentrated on the sinful, negative part of ourselves. And that's very clear. It's in Scripture. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross for our sins Because sin is very serious. Our sin put him on the cross. But he went to the cross not out of guilt, but out of love. But on the other side of that coin, we're created in the image of God. The imagio dei. Every one of us has the image of God living in us. As he said, God don't make no junk. We're so important to God that he came and he died for us. He created us and he died for us. How many times do we beat ourselves up, right? Love yourself as God loves you. I love Ephesians 3, I think it's 3.10. It goes like this, For you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared in advance for you to walk into. You are God's workmanship, you and I. The Greek word for that is poeme. It literally means masterpiece. You and I are God's masterpiece, no matter how broken we are. God is great enough to use our sin. God is great enough to use our brokenness. God is great enough to to create in us life, and he knows the days ordained to us. He loves us, and he wants to use us. That means if we don't love ourselves, we're sinning. If we don't love ourselves, we can't love others. And the way to love ourselves is to let God love us from head to toe. I can't stand myself this morning. But God loves us. We need to get God's perspective on us. Secondly, your own family. Boy, now I'm starting to meddle now. July 4th, do you have a reunion or a family get-together? And, you know, it's that, 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 that one person, you know Jesus loves them, but you can't stand them. <laughs> <laughs> you see them coming, and all of a sudden you've got to go to the bathroom for a couple hours. <laughs> We've got those people in our family, Right? We got those people in our church. I mean, you you can't stand them. It's like the black hole of existence, you know. You see them coming, you just want to run the other way. But God calls us to forgive. Who, Who is that person in your family that you need to step out in faith and ask them to forgive you because of your attitude towards them? And you can say to them, I hate your guts, but I want to confess that. He, who, do we need, or who do we need to go to and, 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 and say, I forgive you for such and such? And they're going to act like they don't know what you're talking about, but at least you got it out. We need to be rectified to each other. If we can't forgive somebody in our family, man, where's our faith? And then what about the church? Sometimes we ask each other, now welcome each other in the name of Christ, Right? You get up there and you're looking around like a deer in headlights. Like, what? you know, I'm going to welcome my own family because I don't know anybody else and I don't want to step out of my safe zone. Go to somebody you don't know. Introduce yourself. Say, are you a new visitor here? And they say, I've been a member here for 25 years. Who are you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're all broken people here. Then we go to our neighborhood. 
How many of us were hospitable in our neighborhood? You know, we live in a, a time and era where we build back porches now, not front porches. Those of us who are older remember the front porch and everybody knew everybody else in the neighborhood and the children could go play in the woods for the entire day and come back and you didn't have to worry about them. Now, because of the expensive thing, everybody has to work. You know, the husband and the wife and they're out and the kids have, have all this directed activity because we're, we want to keep them safe and so we're running and running and running and we, we, we get behind our fortress and we hide and we rest and we don't know our neighbors. We need to step out in faith. Get to know our neighbors. Know them by name. Pray for them. Talk to them. Get to know them. I know we don't have any time, but we need to slow down and do that. Or move to a 70-acre farm. Personally, I'd kind of like to do that. <laughs> then what about our job? Those of you who are, who are working, you know the person that seems trouble, and you're a Christian. Just go up, step out in faith, be praying for them, ask them how they're doing. What about the person of another political party? Oh, God. <laughs> Stepping out on faith. You know, the new uh, religion in America is politics. We're above politics as Christians. I'm still trying to figure out, is, is Jesus independent, Republican, or Democratic? I just don't know. Reaching out beyond the aisle. And then finally, what about the complete stranger? Welcoming them. Somebody of a different ethnicity. Someone of a different color. Someone of a different country. Someone of a different sexual orientation. Welcoming them. Inviting them into your home. Praying for them. You know, I read this uh, Good Samaritan story, and number one, I feel guilty. And if that's not guilty enough, because I like my space, I like my privacy, I, I, I drive by the weaver's home. <laughs> you know, there's at least 10 to 15 cars parked in their driveway, it seems like, every day. <laughs> you talk about somebody that welcomes the stranger into their family. People of different ethnicities people of different religions, people that, that are alone and, and their parents have kicked them out of the home. I mean, this guy not only preaches and teaches hospitality, but he lives it. And he wants us to live it. You know, we're right in between an apartment filled with Asian Americans over there and a college that is filled with, with Africans over here. And, and look around. I mean, it's wasps everywhere here. <laughs> I don't want to put us on a guilt trip, but, but let's get out of ourselves. I want to close um, with this poem. If you look at this poem, Indispensable uh, Man, if you can get it up there. This was written years ago, and I just want to read it. It really struck me. Uh, 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 John Montanelli shared this with me, I believe, last week when we went fishing together, and it goes like this. Sometime when you're feeling important, sometime when your ego's in bloom, sometime when you take it for granted that you're the best qualified in the room, Sometime when you feel that your going would leave an unfillable hole, just follow these simple instructions and see how they humble your soul. Take a bucket and fill it with water. Put your hand in it up to the wrist. Pull it out and the hole that's remaining is a measure of how you'll be missed. You can splash all you wish when you enter. You may stir up the water galore. But stop and you'll find that in no time it looks quite the same as before. The moral of this quaint example is do just the best that you can 
that you can. Be proud of yourself, but remember, there's no indispensable man or woman. Beloved, the only thing that's going to live in your life, in my life, for an eternity is our love of God through worship and our love of others and ourselves through prayer and service. That is the only thing that's going to live on. And you can do that through your job, through your family, through your church, through your neighborhood, and to yourself. To love God and to love others. In fact, the expert of the law, I think, said it best, even though he really couldn't live it. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is radically welcoming the other. Thank you.